Hi, I'm Beth Ann. What's up? I'm Ayla. This is Let's Talk BL, a boys love podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. We are super excited for what has weirdly become like a different kind of episode for us. (laughs) Who would have thought? Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like this is such a full circle moment. It's been a minute since like you and I have just like chatted about a topic that we randomly thought about in our head and well but we wanted to make time for this because it did get requested like a long time ago and we were like oh that's so like we were like yes we want to talk about this when we planned out the podcast we talked about all the different topics that we were interested in as it related to bl and this was on like being a fan yeah like yeah and then like one of the listeners was like hey you guys should talk about this and we were like yes we should because we also find this interesting yeah we have like a whole list of like episode topics that we never actually got to talk about and so before this season ended we really wanted to make time to like talk about this in particular because i feel like this can be kind of confusing but it's also one of the more fun i don't know if you're like me it's one of the more fun things so what is it that we're talking about explain okay, it guys. to the people <laughs> i'm excited we're talking about studios specifically in thailand because y'all when i first got into bls the studios and the talent agencies and just the like things that put out and also manage bl are just unreal because it's a lot from- Coming from K-pop, it makes total sense because, you know, when you get into K-pop, you learn about the studios. You learn about SM and JYP and Big Hit. But it also doesn't make any sense if you're trying to look at it, like, through purely a K-pop lens. Right. So it also can be very confusing in that regard. So Because we uh, we don't have this in the West. Like, we talked about this prior to this episode because I was – when I was putting this episode together, I was like, we don't have anything – even close to this you have Mm -hmm. networks that put on shows and occasionally actors will get repeated but like the actors in the west are totally managed separately yeah and so yeah it's it's wild to learn about these things when you get into entertainment in other countries that like are just nothing like what we have here right so as just a disclaimer um this episode we are only talking about studios in thailand and so like you might be listening to this and being like well what about idea first and i know that because i said well what about (laughs) idea first and so we made the decision because there's just so much to cover we're only going to be talking about thailand and thai studios and to be completely honest with you we're probably not going to fit them all in this episode we are going to do our best we have an outline so like yeah let's get into it let's start with I mean, the obvious one, GMM TV. Yes. The the SM. It's the of, SM. Of Thailand. Of Thai BLs. The of SM of Thai BLs is yeah. GMM TV. This is so like, obvious and clear. And I mean. And some of, okay, so some of these bigger studios obviously are not BL specific. Like they produce and put out a ton of BLs, but that, that's not like all they do kind of like how sm has actors as well as k-pop groups right sm does a lot of stuff and they also yeah. have solo artists that are not right. you know which like you your traditional k-pop groups right which i feel like you don't hear about as much especially for international fans like i i you, you see what you consume and so right. like i don't know a ton about gmm's other GMM's other ventures. Yeah. So what I would say is uh, what you should know about GMM TV is that it is an imprint of GMM Grammy. And so GMM, GMM as a whole has a lot of stuff going on. So not yeah. only do they have GMM TV, which is the primary vehicle for all of their BLs, right. um, they also have a music label and yeah. they've got artists on this music label that have nothing to do with BL and have never been featured in a BL and have never, right? Like, so BL is actually not their main gig. Yeah. It's not their main thing. They have a ton of straight dramas that they are known for. They also do right. movies, right? So, like, GMM as a whole does a lot. GMM TV. And so this is very obvious if you were to ever 
go to Thailand, for example, um, which you can go to Thailand. We will go to Thailand and you can go to this building. You can go yeah. to this GMM Grammy building right. and GMM TV, just GMM TV, which again is the vehicle for BLs that come out of and, GMM. And just like SM, the building is located at GMM TV place. <laughs> right. Like, and so, or GMM Grammy place, not GMM TV. Because again, GMM yeah, TV or is GMM this, place or something. GMM TV is a, an imprint of yeah, yeah. GMM Grammy. And so, if you go to the GMM building, GMM yeah. TV is on the, I believe, 12th floor. And like that is yeah. where the GMM TV stuff happens. And that's where the GMM TV sure. offices are. And all of that like live at lunch stuff that we saw, that yeah. went on on the 12th floor. And so, like, GMM TV is very much its own thing, but is a part of GMM. Mm -hmm. And so the reason I would call them SM is because if we're like relating back to K-pop, which I think is the number one just like urge that most of us have. Yeah, yeah. Um, is because of this sort of just like overreaching, like that GMM as a company, like as a group has this like crazy reach. And also... Because GMM TV boys are very formulaic. And they're girls yeah. too. But yeah. GMM TV boys especially are very, very formulaic. Which is something that like as K-pop fans we have come to expect from SM. Like you can look at a like you can look at a bunch of idols on a stage for like an yeah. award show for example. And you can pick out the SM boys. Right? Like they all like you can just pick out an SM boy. I feel the about, same way they about talk GMM about, TV. They talk about like the SM face. Yeah. That's what GMM TV is. And what's interesting too, to equate the two again, is that that's why everybody was so surprised by the GMM TV rollout for 2022 because they like, changed things up a little like it wasn't a little at, it wasn't space, gmm space. Yeah. yeah it wasn't gmm and, tv sort of like fluffy. sm is doing too yeah so i mean sm in the past has taken some risks but like obviously sm is a much older company than gmm tv the imprint is and like the right. bl world is right. so they've just like had more time to do this but the thing about gmm tv is that like those boys and again i think this is the thing to take away from it is like the GMM TV boys look like GMM TV boys, right? If you yeah. think about it, right? Like pull up a picture of like, let's just talk about like the four pillars, right? Like right. those that got us into BL for the most part. Like yeah. look at off, look at gun, look at, even if we go outside the four pillars, right? So if we look at off, we look at gun, we look at Tay, we look at new, we look at bright, we look at win. Um, we They've right, but then that's the what I'm beginning. saying. Bring yeah. bring in the boys that are not pillars. But that have been you, there since, like, the early days. Right, but that have been there. Look at Drake. Look at Frank. People forget that Drake and Frank are actually an OG GMM TV couple. Yeah. Right. Um, Like, they are one of the first. Yeah. And then also, if you look at, like, Puin, who has been at GMM TV for ever he yeah. is a prime example yeah. Puin came into gmm tv as an actual child <laughs> like he truly was like 12 years old yeah. yeah and so like this is what i mean when i say like gmm tv is so formulaic that right. somebody looked at Puin and was like he's gonna grow into the thing that we want and he <laughs> did yeah and so like i will say you do have some boys that sort of like fall in and out so like for example first of don't say no so don't mm -hmm. say no first was a part of gmm tv very briefly yeah i feel like it makes total sense to me that first is no longer a part of gmm tv i don't think he like he's not that formulaic mm. right yeah um but then like mix makes total sense as a gmm boy right. gmm tv is just one of those places where it's just so rigidly formulaic that you can look at them and be like that's a GMM TV boy. Just like how, and this again, to your point, which is why the 2022 rollout was like, people were like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a, t there, for the most part, GMM TV shows you can look at and be like, oh, it's GMM TV. Like, I yeah. know what's going to happen. I know the formula. I know that just like you can pick out an SM song That's or why... you can pick out, right? Like the different yeah. producers in K-pop, you can pick out, I can pick out an SM song like that. Like, I know I'm like, yeah. oh, this came out of SM, even if I don't know the idol, if, even if I'm guessing. Right. It's That's the same I thing with GMM TV shows. Like, 
the beginning of the year with like tale of a thousand stars and uh fish upon the sky i think because of the boys in them people know what to expect from gmm tv and if there's like something problematic or if there's something like n- that you don't love about it like you kind of overlook it because you're like it's just gmm tv and that's why it's funny because bad buddy has really taken you know be all world by storm and i think to the shock of the fact that it's boys we've known for a very long time and the storytelling is great i mean you have but here's the thing we say we say that it's boys we've known for a very long time this is a lie right like ohm yes nana no if you are looking at it from like a bl world if you're looking at it in the bl world actually like bl world doesn't know nana this is nana's first Uh, bl except they've shipped nana and shimon i think for a very long time but you say they that's like i would say that's not the international bl world Mm. right like yeah, the yeah. international BL world is like in the dark about Nanan because he's kind of like hidden away in all the GMM TV straight dramas. True, and true. so like I actually disagree that it's like boys we've known forever. Mm-hmm. I think Nanan is like a surprise. And I think Nanan is like, I would say like a, one of the top reasons that that show is doing so well. Yeah. Internationally, oh, because remember, that. it's not doing that well domestically. Mm. Yeah. And so, like, I don't even know that I would say Bad Buddy is, like, taking the BL world by storm because – and, like, I'm not trying to be a hater on Bad Buddy. What I'm saying Mm. is, like, this kind of just, like, everyone talking about it and everyone just, like, being interested in it and talking about it and it's, like, the thing. This was Don't Say No last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? There's not so much like, happening in 2021. Yeah, sure. like this was Don't Say No last month. But so. I think that's again because of because it's a GMM TV, I think so many people are like, "Oh, it's not Futz, it's not Tale of a Thousand Stars." Like that's the, that's what I would equate it to. It's the fact that like you know, it's like Jae Hyun being rumored to be in a BL. <laughs> it's like, "Wait a second. You mean you're not I don't, it doesn't make sense coming from the studio. So yeah, I will say GMM TV, you know what you're going to get from their shows. You know what you're going to get from their boys. Their boys are multi-talented. A lot of them do speak English, which I think is interesting. They definitely. I don't know that I would say a lot of them. I think, I think I mean, the more thing than is I think the they just have a lot of boys. Yeah. They right. Do. In terms of, if we're yeah. talking about just like the ratio, True. I don't know that I would say the ratio is higher than any other studio. I just think <laughs> they have a lot of boys. They do. They do. So. Yeah, GMM TV is definitely one of the first studios that you will have interaction with. Again, and their stuff is on YouTube. Like, their stuff is always on YouTube, right? So, like, it's more yeah. accessible. Well, and here's Some the thing. GMM TV stuff is good. Like, whatever. Hate on GMM TV if you want. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason they and their boys are so popular. Yeah. And it's not, like, I mean, t- like, Tay Tawan is never going to not be popular, right? Like, yeah, I, yeah. sorry, William, I know I'm I saying do. his name wrong. Whatever, come for me. <laughs> we can have a conversation online about this if you want to. But I, I like, yeah. So, like, the thing about it is that, like, yeah. it's they have been around forever, and it's not like they're not going anywhere and they're not going to not be popular, and their stuff isn't going to be bad because they have the money behind it, right? So, yeah. like, they kind of woke up with this 2022 rollout. Because they were realizing that, like, oh, we have to, like, they have and, and it's it's interesting to me that they're calling it borderless because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but not sure. Different conversation, different conversation they for a different all their day. trailers. That's probably what they were like. We did, that. yeah. Well, and they here's the thing: they're like GMM TV <laughs> shows are always subbed, yeah, and very quickly too. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked about the SM of BL. Let's talk about the JYP of BL. (laughs) I say, okay, are we? So I think the JYP of BL is Star Hunter. Star Hunter. Star Hunter. I would too. I would definitely, y'all. Again, this is not an expert opinion. This is conversations that Ayla and I have. I'm (laughs) just kidding. These These are conversations that Ayla and I have on the regular. You know, just because 
this is our life right now. So uh, if you don't know what Star Hunter is, Star yeah. Hunter is the studio behind Gen Y. Kim Cop. Kim, so Kim Cop, right? Studio SB5, 100. SB5. SB5. Baz. They're coming out with another group, I think. Yeah, they're doing they some new group. It. Yeah. Uh, what else has, what else has, uh, they were, there was some type of collaboration for Two Moons, right? Um, no. So all of, so Two Moons happened. Oh God, I can't believe you're dragging <laughs> Two Moons into this situation. I mean, Kim Two Cop Moons happened, two, two Moons happened, and all of the boy, and also the boy that played fourth. Oh yeah. And S I want to see the boy that all played fourth. All the SB5 game. boys. T in. and Tay. So T, T and Tay. Yeah. Um, Motive Village happened. I'm just going to say their name. Oh, God. <laughs> say the name. Say it out loud. Um, I'm just going to – so Motive Village and that whole thing happened. and Because Star Hunter didn't start until 2018. Correct. And so all wild. of that, like, wildness happened with Two Moons, and those boys left, and they needed a place to go, and they they all landed at Star oh, Hunter. So it wasn't a collab. It was that, like, that's where they all crash landed after that okay. debacle. KO took him under their wings. I love yeah. it so much. So we would equate Star Hunter to JYP because, again, when you start learning about Kim Cop, when you find the wonderful thing that is SB5, when you get into all that, you quickly learn about, you know, Star Hunter and KO and that studio. And it's a pretty close knit family. They've been they've been putting out a lot of stuff over this past year with my uh matchmate and a couple of tiktok series with a couple of the boys like pretty much everybody in gen y is under star hunter at this point yes and i would say honestly so like the reason i would equate star hunter to jyp is because they it's a little more fun and a little less formulaic yeah. than gmm tv but it's still pretty formulaic right like there there is Our an underlying like yeah. Right, but but like there's sort of like a theme <laughs> that they right. all follow, I would say. And part of that is like the musicality of them all, right? Like all of these boys oh, yeah. are like the musicality of it. And like that's a theme at JYP. Like they're all like artists, yeah. right? Like, you know what I mean? Um, they're and a triple it's, threat. It's a little like it's more fun and lighthearted and right, like as much grief as everybody gives JYP and like – <laughs> like you laugh, you laugh and it's okay to laugh. And it's like, if you think about, so like Stray Kids and Got7 yeah. and Twice, like they all just kind of like have this like theme to those groups as being like fun. And they, that this is what Star Hunter is. It's and just And you don't fun. feel like they have like something on their shoulders as far as they, all the Star Hunter boys have been able to do their individual things. And so like you have some of them streaming you have like them kind of venturing off and doing like individual stuff right yeah or copter copter is like a a, a gamer <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him and too. like all of those boys have been able to do solo stuff as well as like, um baz's solo stuff. stuff is the best too yeah but actually what oh. baz's song lonely brain was like on my top five for my spotify wrapped this year <laughs> Which is like so funny to look That's at. Amazing. Yeah. That's so good. Uh okay. I think that's it for Star Hunter. There's not much more to Star Hunter. There's not a lot like to say. Star, Star Hunter, Hunter is newer. They also just like because of when they were formed and the just like amount of time that it took to put projects out. I think Star Hunter is gonna be a big one in this coming year because they've got just like a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. Um, so I think people are gonna learn a lot more about Star Hunter. Yeah. As going forward into this next year. And so, like, next I would say let's talk about YG, who is the black yeah. pink of, of yeah. this situation. And it's Nadal. Totally. Which, fun fact, I learned when I was researching for this episode, Nadal started as a subsidiary of GMM Grammy. And uh, they then, the, like, parent company that was connected to GMM dissolved. And so Nadal is, like, it's separate a separate entity now. And it it's like the it's like the cool kids, the cool kids, the like artsy, artsy darker. Yeah. They like when I was reading the article that talked about the stuff, it was like they rely heavily on the art stuff. Like they don't care so much about the 
financial part of it because like their music imprint which is like a huge part i feel like of now hasn't even yeah. made profit up until 2020 like they're darker they're sexier yeah. like yeah which is like a big yg vibe and so the yeah. thing about now that's really interesting is that i think that they're and they treat it and you can tell because of like not just their talent so not just Bilkin and PP and Obe and right like and their yeah. boys right but also based on the creatives that they use so they use a lot of just like yeah very very like almost art house creatives so like mm-hmm. I talk a lot about Tong Bad Voice Tong Ta- not Tawan that's Tay Tay Tawan I don't know I'm not gonna try my brain um but so, like, Tong Bad Voice is very, yeah. like, he's, like, a street photographer and, like, a super cool right. cinematographer. And then Rinrada is, like, a very, like, she does a lot of their, like, she's usually the director of photography um, right. on most of the projects. And she also is just, like, very artsy, like, art house, like, that kind of thing. And that is the Nadal vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nadal's an interesting studio because there's like at this point it's Bilkin PP. I mean, you right. do have like the non BL boys that are talked about a lot and quite a few of the girls as well, but you will see a little bit of the overlap with GMM and those actors from Nadal showing up in GMM stuff and kind of just this overlap between the two, which I think is really interesting. But yeah, Nadal, like you're going to get. Like, I'll be interested to see what the next thing they put out is. I think they're going to focus more on music this next year. I don't think Mm. we're going to see a lot from them as, like, a BL studio. I think think that's what we'll see. Also, like, it is worth it to note that, like, Goy Natty Dream are, like, connected to Nadal in that Goy wrote it's a she was also Mm -hmm. in i promised you the moon and i believe was on the writing team for i promised you the moon and so like there's a lot of that that happens at nadal that you don't necessarily see at other studios where like the writers it's all like interwoven right like the writers are in and it's like written for specific boys and it's all very like intertwined like everything is intertwined yeah Okay, so the other studios that you learn about pretty early on are Studio Wabi Sabi, just because, you know, Until We Meet Again is a huge one, In of Love uh, is a huge um, show that you kind of, well, that we have, we were introduced to as soon as we got into BL. Right. So Studio Wabi Sabi there's some connection to GMM because they've like the uh the founder of Studio Wabi Sabi is uh new and he has connections because they Studio Wabi Sabi has done production work and have staffed GMM projects. So and so this is a good note to say that like this is kind of one of the main ways that like the studio the like Thai BL studios mm-hmm. depart from like this K-pop comparison that we're making yeah. because in general the K-pop studios don't collab or work together yeah. or right like you would never find like an SM artist and a JYP artist doing right. a duet or something you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. um but you and do so, have but you like, do see this in these studios. There's a lot of like overlap yeah. and working together, and like a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, the closest you would get would be like, uh, would be a uh, big hit coming out of JYP. Like, what's his name? The like, uh, Bang producer yeah. Bang came out yeah. of like Bang JYP. PD. Yeah, yeah. But he was just like a producer. Like he wasn't one of the top head kind of things. So, anyways, Studio Wabi Sabi. It has more of your, like, outlying boys. Like, they are very unique. Uh, I feel like these. this is almost like the mean girls of this is not, a like, a K-pop comparison. Yeah, yeah. But it's, like, they're, like, crazy popular, crazy beautiful. But also, like, yeah. they are one of the only studios to like support and be all on board with having like openly gay actors yeah. signed to their roster. So like right. Studio Wabi Sabi has Boone and Prem and then 
we call him Little Earth. You probably know him as Kuhart, right. um, who is an openly gay actor. Um, and then obviously they have Santa. They also have Yacht and they have Sammy, who is like the right. most beloved BL girl like of all time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They also have Benz and Baby Benz. Uh as like daddy, father does not mean daddy. Just no, no. yeah. No, they have um P P and P bins, the coffee. Oh right, bins. no, yeah, that's true. They have they have yeah yeah other bins because here's the thing. Is. When I was researching, apparently bins and folk who appear in In of Love are no longer with Studio Wabi Sabi. Apparently, oh, okay. are independent. Uh, because that's the other thing too, y'all. We are learning our information via like translated Thai websites and like who knows and also through like kind of working with these managers to book these people like that has shed some light on this for us yeah because like we have had to have these conversations where it's like okay well if you want this couple I can only help you with one boy in this couple and so you have to go talk to this completely separate person to get this Uh, other boy in this couple like we have had those conversations (laughs) and even sometimes like off artist management are like you need to go talk to the production house of the show right which is wild that like what (laughs) i feel like it's like a once they hand them to do a show they're like he's your responsibility now yeah (laughs) you make his lunch today (laughs) you you hold his coffee for him it's so true that's why it's interesting for the studios that kind of have everything in house you do have more i think loyalty to that studio and that brand whereas some of these other boys like kind of come and go a little bit unless they get like huge like a sing who right. is gonna leave a gmm tv because like no one can contain saying yeah so that's another <laughs> thing to know just like hopping back to gmm tv quickly people generally don't leave GMM TV. Yeah. And so one, there are a couple of exceptions that like there are two like I'd say more notable people that have left, but like the most notable BL person that has left GMM TV is Singto. So Singto is an independent actor. Like Singto is not signed to any one of these big studios. Right. But so um, Wabi Sabi, super cool, like – newer on the scene and also really tight knit. And so what's interesting to note about Wabi Sabi is that like they, they do again have this like freedom for like having an openly gay actor signed to their roster, which is a big deal. It is. Um, And then also there is a, there are a lot of like business dealings that go down in partnership between the artists and then the like, staff and ownership of Wabi Sabi. So for example, right. uh Cafe Wab and Friends Cafe. Yeah. So Wab and Friends Cafe obviously shares the name of Wabi Sabi. Yeah. Um it is owned by Boone and Yacht and New, who is yeah. the like founder, producer, he is Mr. Wabi Sabi. Yeah, yeah. Um and Kuhart, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. And Little Earth. So, like, all of these artists and the like owner of the studio have this like separate business yeah. together. Yeah. And the yeah. other, so this is the first time that we can kind of tie into again the, the K pop connection is the fact that a lot of these actors tend to live together. So Studio Wabi Sabi is kind of the first one where we know that they have like a dorm type situation. Like they have a building and they stay in their building and they have like a tour they did recently where they talked about like, I think Boone and Yacht are roommates and Earth has, I think, his own floor. <laughs> and of, course, of course, as he deserves. Yeah. So that's the other interesting part. So then to tie in to that, one of our most beloved and favorite studios, obviously, would be Rookie Thailand. Rookie Thailand. Rookie and, Thailand. you know, the word beloved is a really interesting word. Yes. Um, and the word favorite <laughs> is an interesting word. I think Rookie Thailand I, is probably the studio that we have spent the most time like obsessing over. Like we yeah. partially it's because we just every single boy that is a rookie boy and we call them rookie boys and we refer to rookie as just like rookie. We're just yeah. like, oh yeah, rookie, blah, blah, blah. And we'll just have casual conversations about Rookie Thailand totally. at this point to the point where, yes, 
we are wearing homemade Ricky Thailand shirts because this is just a thing we own and that we have owned for a while. This is not like a new thing we did for this episode. Yeah, no. This, this is, is like, like a a separate a whole separate thing. This is one of the first pieces of like homemade merch that I made for us. This is like a just for fun behind the behind thing. the Yinwar shirts that Ayla also made. So like y'all yeah. bad for Oh yeah, Yinwar was are- Yinwar was I think our very first Anyways, we, we, we are love Rookie Thailand group. We're we are Rookie Thailand fans. We stand. And what's interesting is that like Okay, so let's talk about who Rookie Thailand has because yes. their boys are very specific. You have Yin War. Yin which War. are like which which we talked about this recently. We think because if you go on Rookie Thailand's website, <laughs> we think that like they got Yin War because they seem to have like a little bit of like the influencer kind of situation. They went influencer and you know, so here's Rookie Thailand did start as like almost like a DVA, which is like influencer marketing mostly yeah. because that's how Yin talks about how he got signed to Rookie Thailand right. is he was signing with somebody just to be an influencer. And, like, and then they were like, kiss this boy. And he was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now here Yin War are like, Two of the most famous BL boys in Thailand on this, a cover of a magazine right. with Austin. Awesome. Like, and BKPP. Like, what? Like, Get what? For rookie Thailand? Okay, so then you have Prom, which is, like, one of my personal favorites. And Bon. Bon Win. Who's one of my favorite. One of my yeah. personal favorites. We got the two booms who are going to be in their own BL this year. Yes, you have Boom and Big Boom. And then you have these random boys that, like, they haven't done anything I call them the rookie children. So rookie (laughs) Thailand has this sort of like cohort of like boys that they keep just like in rotation, just to the side, just like at the ready. In their house, because they have a house. Like you Rookie Thailand also has a dorm, dorm. yes. The dorm and this is where our is sort of like studio like dorm. our like studio brains started to explode when we first got into this is because we would watch <laughs> and I think it's because we liked Yinwar so much and like yeah. We like we just liked all of these boys so much that we were yeah. watching all of their like IG stories, and then of course we were all stuck at home. So right. like, where are they? They're at home. Yeah. And so like we're seeing all of this, and we're connecting the dots. We're like, wait, 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 right? And so like we start to connect all of the dots, and then like we really appreciate their um creative team. So their makeup artists and their hairstylist, we right. really like just like as artists, and so they post a whole ton of stuff. Watching their content, we, like, you start to get this full picture of, like, rookie dorm life. <laughs> Especially because these boys are not from Bangkok. Like, these, right. this studio is probably the they're studio that boys. has, like, yeah, they're not Bangkok boys. They're not Bangkok boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but so back to what you were saying. Rookie Thailand, I, I would equate them to, like, Cube Entertainment, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is sort of a dig and sort of not a dig. Obviously, I we are universe, so yeah, like yeah. our alt group is a cube group. We love to hate them, but like the thing about it, and like you were saying, is if you look at their website, their website was sort of like built and then no one ever touched it again. Nobody. And what we were theorizing happened is that they they got all of their boys cast in N of Love. All which was them. this like collab <laughs> with Wabi Sabi. Yeah. And Yin War just got so popular so fast that Rookie yeah. Thailand just kind of like didn't know what to do with themselves. And I, like, I think they had a scaling problem, right? Like they didn't really know how to scale all of this up. And now they're kind of like trying to produce their own stuff. So they produced the best story. Yeah. Um, which was like their first sort of like solo production thing that they did by themselves on right. their own, like Which is no other solid. collab studio. The best story was awesome. It had some holes, but production wise, the number one hole in the best story is that like somebody would look at War and like he wouldn't be popular and cute and like people wouldn't have crushes on him. True, mm. true. Mm. Uh, also, they have a ton of uh online like web series they love yeah. the like variety show stuff they're so big you on have, youtube like, yeah they have a lot of just like self-produced they're youtube big on youtube they're big i on just YouTube. love that like <laughs> rookie thailand they're big on youtube they have like a self a lot of self-produced content so like right. this is what i say when like 
Yin told that story, and this is how you know Rookie started as like influencer marketing is because yeah. Yin tells the story on one of their in-house shows, which is called Talk Talent, which has Pratt. So Rookie Talent also has Pratt, who is one of my uh, just yeah, like, yeah. oh, sweet Pratt, baby Pratt. Yeah. I Pratt is so dear to my heart. This <laughs> this sweet little boy, I love who him now so has much. Braces, so it's a whole thing for Ayla. Oh, he is a sweet little <laughs> angel baby. And I love him. But so, yes, Pratt and Beaver have a show called Talk Talent where they, like, interview other Rookie Thailand boys and also other boys. But, like, really, it's Rookie yeah. Thailand boys. And, yeah, Yin tells the story of getting signed. And, like, uh, like basically, they always knew they were going to pair him with War. It's really interesting. You should go watch his episode because he talks about how, like, when they first Bond met. just doesn't talk to him. Like, Bond just is – like, Bond apparently is, like, a big, famous, like, diva. Okay. <laughs> I know because Bond was like there from the beginning. So it was like Bond. And Bond has always been like a popular influencer, which is very confusing. That's okay. That's the other thing about Rookie Thailand is they're very Thai. Like it is Mm -hmm. hard to know like the scope of Rookie Thailand because of how Thai they are. It's kind of like Yin War where yin war is a whole thing in thailand but internationally which is ironic because like all of most of rookie thailand stuff is subbed and there is like an international market but like i don't feel like outside of like our obsessing over (laughs) rookie thailand we start talking about this and people are like what is wrong with you like we're like yin war like people get so confused when people ask me like Oh, well, who's your, and like people it's who like listen to the Pentagon podcast life know. all over again. And people are like, who? Yeah, because <laughs> this used to happen to us with Pentagon. They would be like, yeah. Pentagon? And we'd be like, yeah. It's like, it's like pe- shine is to in of love. Yes. Oh my God. Pentagon yes. To rookie Thailand. Yeah. 100%. So this oh. is Rookie Thailand. Honestly, what you need to know about Rookie Thailand is nothing will ever make sense. Just yeah. like give up. Uh, if you're hoping it's going to make sense to you, give up because no. no. Nothing with Rookie will ever make sense to you. All you need to know is Yin War. I highly recommend going and following Bon because like yeah. honestly, he gives you this like inside look at Rookie as a studio. And if you like that kind of stuff, like the dorm, like they have this crazy dorm life. Their makeup artist lives with them sometimes, and so does their hairstylist. Which, okay, wait, wait, wait. Reverse, because they have this dorm, but Yin War, they, like, booked an Airbnb for a while, right? When they started. Because they didn't always have a dorm. Right. When they started, like, making it. Because, again, In of Love just, like, took off. They just got so famous so so fast. So is Rookie Thailand exclusively producing this full length end of love? I have no idea. Again, (laughs) again, when it comes to Rookie Thailand, nothing will ever make sense and you will know no details. And this is what you need to just accept in your life. Accept it into your heart, just like Jesus, and move on because it's never gonna make sense to you. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, let's move on. So what are the last of the like may like the foundational ones that you'll learn about when you get into BL and that you'll hear about, especially as we go into 2022, is Jamundi. Because Jamundi had a rollout similar to GMM, uh, where they are like prepping for all of these new series. They have like their solid group of boys and so jamundi is cutie pie the series if that's what you're yeah. like oh what do i know that from like if you saw cutie pie like that trailer why Dimundi. are you yeah uh so that's so jamundi is interesting okay because here's the thing when i, I am first, low-key so obsessed with jamundi when i first got into bl would be a why are you uh i started researching those boys and found this like these this travel series on youtube and so jamundi potentially as a studio started by joss yes joss joss GMM of TV gmm tv GMM. three will be three will be free kiss and take one on the mouth that joss started a travel vlog with like a handful of the the boys that are still in jamundi so we have like uh max was one of the originals 
Poppy and Park were one of the Poppy, originals. Poppy, who I love Poppy. I am obsessed with Poppy. Uh, Z from Why Are You? Why are you? Uh, and a few of a few other boys that I don't know if they've really acted in anything that like is BL related. So, anyways, they have this travel vlog that they did that Luke sometimes. And then I was going to say Luke pops up. So, like, Luke of GMMTV of, like, Safe House fame. If you – because, again, if you are exclusively a BL fan, just hearing the name Luke means nothing to you because he's a GMMTV straight actor. Like, he has not been in a BL. He's not a BL boy. He's just besties with Joss. He he and Joss have like a bunny family going on. Yeah. And they're like periphery. That's the other thing is when you get into BLs and when you get into just like Thai actors in general, the ones who have connections outside of Thailand, you pretty quickly learn about because it's just interesting the fact that like they grew Luke up- is Japanese American, by the way, um, yeah. who grew up in what, Maryland or something Somewhere. like that? And then for yeah. some reason moved to Thailand. He and I like, actually went to the same college and we actually overlapped very briefly, which is like yeah. wild to he me. So when, Washington, like so Yeah, random. when I, I was getting in, like, my finance. master's. Yeah, when I was getting my master's, he was getting his bachelor's and we went to the same school and we overlapped briefly, which just is like the wildest thing to Did me. Did you get a when college I yearbook? That, that would be funny. No, I was getting my master's. I didn't care at that point. I was just like, oh, right, right, right. Like I had already done the like four year college thing. Yeah. I was just like, uh. Give me the degree. But it's it's absolutely wild to me, particularly when you think about the way that like college alumna alumnus work in Thailand. Yeah, they are all they like remain best friends forever. And all you have to do is like utter your university name right. and you're like best friends. I'm like, hey, Luke. <laughs> like we actually legitimately overlapped for yeah. a year. Like yeah, we were yeah. there at the same time. You need to get all of your school merch. Wear it when we go to the. Gym I actually have morning. a bunch of school merch because I spent a lot of money on my college degrees, right. so I like rep the hell out of my schools. <laughs> it's so much. Yeah, like fully. I I like truly should probably just like actually write the alumnus like organization like because we do have one i still get emails from him all the time i bet he does too i bet we both get the same alumnus emails right so like the thing about luke is that what i think is the most interesting about luke is he was on this domundi thing with joss because he and joss are besties yeah luke is the only non-bl boy to be on safe house they randomly pulled him, and whose idea was that? And why was he there? Is is Luke gonna be in a BL? Are they yeah. teeing him up for BL life? Well, because it's... you know my cons- my conspiracy theory with this Chris Mike thing in Safe House. I think that Safe House was like an A B tester situation for GMM TV. <laughs> Imagine he could have only be with Josh. Theories. Like people would riot if he ever was paired with anybody else. He wouldn't make know. sense with anybody else. Like he can't. That's get only a because we know that he has a bunny family with Joss. <laughs> it's true. Oh, <sighs> I'm just saying. So, anyways, it's a Joe whole, like, <laughs> Earth. If they would. They could be the next Earth mix. I mean, like Earth mix is fully just doing their thing. But like, I feel like they. I don't know. I like. I can't see it just because they are such fun friend. Like yeah. friends, they very much read as like friends to yeah, me yeah, yeah. that i just don't know if i could see it but like also, i don't know i support you luke reads hella straight so like i couldn't imagine even just like suspending disbelief for a hot minute so I, but anyways, i think it's because we know those two so well yeah 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 true uh, okay so jamundi is putting out quite a few we have uh cutie pie the series we have bed friends we had there was a little bit of a collaboration with jamundi and copy a for uh, why destiny for why destiny these boys show up in a couple of different things and so max nat z poppy those are probably the main ones that you know that are like domundi boys yeah. new is not so new new so of like z new of like yeah. cutie pie right. is not technically a domundi boy like signed on the dotted line although he is a part of domundi cute line so I take think that as you maybe will a take new it. addition. I don't know. I don't know. He, I, ha- I have like just recently talked to his manager and he actually shares a manager with somebody who was also in Y Destiny, but who is not a copy A boy. It's mm-hmm. all very weird and confusing. And you also have Jimmy, Tommy, and Demundi. 
I think mm. Tommy was one of the original Jamundi boys too. He showed up in that travel vlog. Yeah, yeah. So Jimmy Tommy. Yeah. Jamundi is also if you watch their content online, I think they have a house and I think they're very And their house is like bougie like they have like a fancy house this is not like rookie thailand where there's just like skateboards and garbage everywhere they have like a compound yeah (laughs) Yeah. there's definitely some like independently wealthy money behind this situation uh because that's a thing like this bl stuff is like you know five six years newish and especially with the establishment of like a bkpp or a uh like Tainu or any of those like money heavy actors like even Cowup I think people and Yen War like if you take away the fan part of it and simply look at the the product endorsements and the money yeah. these aren't just they're not just getting like Thailand products like BKPB are are like getting china money <laughs> like, B- right yeah but like bk huge. like okay pp has a ysl deal for example which is like crazy and like yin war have laneige thailand which again is right. like is the thailand subsidiary but like laneige is a part of amore pacific which is an international company yeah right so like these are the people that do like Suhasu and right like yeah. th- which by the way Gulf if you're th- if you're trying to like how do I equate this Gulf is the face of Suhasu <laughs> yeah. in Thailand so yeah. this is the kind of money we're talking about yeah so Jamundi is a small pretty tight-knit group of boys uh that we've kind of heard and seen more of again a lot of these smaller studios that have like a roster of boys put out a lot of content on YouTube. So that's kind of how you then stumble into, because I don't know about you, but for me, when I watch shows and learn and like love an actor or love a show, I'll spiral and do like, I'll watch all their content. I'll watch all their shows. I'll watch. Honestly, this in. is how Yin War got me is I, <laughs> Yeah. stumbled across the middle of not the middle of the scene it's episode four of wxy mm-hmm. which is just like their yeah. little like youtube series and they're like eating spicy food and i was just Gosh. like yeah yeah it's solid okay so that's it for jim Mundy. So now let's talk about some of the bigger ones that are smaller, right? They're bigger, but they're smaller. So first, first one that I would say, which I didn't realize people didn't really know about this until we recently did an Instagram live and people were like shocked by this information. Mm -hmm. Saint of Saint Z of Why Are You has his own studio that has actors that has productions. And so it's called idol factory. Saint is of course signed to it. Um, he also has like a plethora of other boys. And then he has like, uh, most notably he has Becky from Tarn type. Yeah. Yeah. And they're putting out their first production in 2022. We've, we've just gotten a little bit of the ramp up. Like I think they had their worship ceremony and they're kind of like, in production yeah. he's and they're also producing a gl and so that's GL, where that's yeah. where like becky comes in is they are producing gap which is like one of the higher profile gls it's like a really popular novel yeah um and then they have been really working the ship angle which like it's really interesting because saint of course is a bl boy who now has his own studio and so yeah. he really understands from like multiple viewpoints about like kind of like how to play this game yeah yeah and so what's interesting, if you look at Becky and Freen is her partner's name. Okay. They have been working this ship angle yeah. for like a hot minute. And it's like very sweetly done. Like it's not, it doesn't feel forced. Right. Of course, like well, and I mean, the cutest human ever. She's, and a, so like, she's a baby. And she's that's because precious. like the plot of this GL is like a CEO and an intern. Mm, and so yeah. like Freen is a good amount older than Becky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to kind of see w- once he starts putting out shows what that looks like. Because like. It's Saint. Like, people love Saint. He is talented. He 
has quality stuff that he's put out. So he knows, I think he knows what he's doing. And so it will be interesting to see what comes out of his studio in the next like year or so. I'm excited yeah. about that. So another one that's like newer that is a BL boy yeah. um, is Just Up. Right. So Just Up um, <laughs> is very creatively named, just. Uh, was started by Up but it's and not, Justin. It's not Just Up, which is ironic. Right. It's not Just Up. It's Up and Justin. And Justin. And so that's where they get the Just, Just Up. It's very yeah. creative naming um, scenario. We love it. We live for it. Yeah. Um, obviously, what's interesting about this that I think people don't realize is, first of all, Up is a genius. Like, yeah. Up is super, super smart. He is a businessman. Yeah. Like, he is not just, like, a cute boy. He, yeah, yeah. I mean, Up is smart. And so yeah. Just Up is interesting because they're very business-minded. Right. And they really understand their product and what they have. And so recently, Just Up announced a collab with D Hub House, which mm -hmm. D Hub House obviously put out Lovely Rider. Yeah. Um. And so they are going to work together on a project. They bought the rights to this like novel series. Right. And they're going to put that out. But so I think what people don't realize about Just Up is that they don't just have Up signed to them. They are truly yeah. an artist management company. Yeah, yeah. Because they have, you guys, Max. Like Max. of Max Tool. Yeah. Which is so interesting. I'm assuming it started with Justin managing Max. And then maybe at some point he and Up or he was managing up and then they like collaborated because there's like this, co this college connection between Max and up like Max and up were college buddies. And then. Ooh, so know. that means Max knows going at dream too, because yeah. up and dream. Is it dated in college? I think or was so. it Natty? It wasn't Goy. No, it wasn't Goy. I don't remember. Maybe it was, if it was Natty. Natty or Dream. I don't know. Y'all go watch Goy and Natty Dream with um, Up. It was a wonderful. It's episode. really interesting exactly. to watch. And this is what I mean by the college connections in Thailand. Yeah. Luke, like Tol, can we carry this over? Tol and, Tol and Tay. Tol and Tay went, went to college, college together. together. Although Tol collects these boys like Pokemon cards. <laughs> so like Tol is actually knows everybody. True, true. And shows up everywhere. It's yeah, like, what did we so like? Cool. We started making this joke where we were like, if there's ever more than two BL boys in the same place, all you have to do is like look in a mirror and say Tool's name three times and he appears. <laughs> like, it's true. It's going to be Petch is like following in Tool's footsteps. Yeah, Petch is baby Tool. Yeah, yeah. I love it so much. So, speaking of Max, of Max Tool. Yeah. Might as well talk about TV Thunder because I think that a lot of people incorrectly assume that Max is under TV Thunder because Tool is signed to TV Thunder. But yeah. Tool, I believe, is TV Thunder's only BL boy. And the deal about TV Thunder is that TV Thunder never existed to be like a BL yeah. production studio. Like they've like actually a, been around for a long huge, time. Yeah, they're a huge production house. And they're this huge production house. They do just like Thai television shows, right? right? And so like this whole like Max Tool thing that happened with them was almost like a it, it's like their one-off, right? Like Max <laughs> Tool and Manner they, of Death and all that had, is like their one-off. They had Cal for a hot minute, at least I think they did because I like took this deep dive not too long ago and there was like a group there was like a TV Thunder like trip <laughs> beach frolic and it was like oh, a bunch of TV Thunder people and it was tall and it was Cal from like Cal mm -hmm. up and I was like oh yeah and so the yeah TV Thunder is just like you're gonna hear the name because they are the vehicle for Max Tool going forward yeah but so TV Thunder also is actually the domestic so the the Thai Thai side of Paint with Love with Singto right. and Tay of Singto of course is independent but tay is in star hunter so this is where you can see like this is a departure from like this k-pop comparison that everybody likes yeah. to make because like there is a lot of overlap and working together and like mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's the other thing too is that i think as we get into more different streaming services and different things you're gonna see more collaborations and you're gonna kind of hear about these studios that are producing things because a lot of these studios 
now realize like the importance of BL. So they're going to be like buying rights to certain books and like doing all these kinds of things. And so you're going to kind of hear and see studios and production houses be talked about more, I think, because like you get it a little bit with, uh, you know, copy a, when they put out, um, why destiny, Destiny. like you knew it was copy a, because like it was there. (laughs) Like that was like, it was almost like kind of what, until we meet again put I felt like studio Wabi Sabi on the map because like studio Wabi Sabi it was the first thing that you saw to the intro of that and yeah. really kind of paid attention to and so since you mentioned cow just like a natural what's the next thing we talk about here yeah. I would say would be SMDT Thailand is another studio or like artist management company yeah. like not so much studio that don't really produce things but they're yeah. like an artist management group. Um, and that's where cow is now. So cow of cow up of lovely yeah. writer is at SMDT Thailand. This is also sort of like the landing pad for um, quite a few of the two moons, two boys. Mm. So dome and Ben, who I yeah. love yeah. Um, dome and Ben are at SMDT Thailand. And yeah. then also Ken, who was in lovely writer, who's in, um, like he's in a couple things coming out this be in next the theory year. Series. He's gonna be in the theory series, which so is Dome. And so this is where you see an artist management. So this is a good segue too, because you also have a ton of just like super small studios that are coming out that are like doing their thing. And so right. here's a good example of a super small studio sort of collabing with and working with. This is like what I would say back when End of Love came out, this was like the Wabi Sabi Rookie Thailand deal Right, is what's going on right now with Theory Series. So Theory Series has Ken and Dome of SMDT Thailand. And then it is produced by Yoma Entertainment And Yoma's bringing in some of their people. And then they also have an independent actress coming in, which is um, Ben's of N of Love Ben's. Right, right. And so it's very much like how you were either like you were either a rookie boy or a Wabi Sabi boy with N of Love. It's kind of the same deal. And so this is where we start talking about these smaller studios that kind of have like actors you probably don't know, but you might recognize. So you mentioned Copy A. So Copy A has Toru, who I think is probably I would say the most well known. Yeah. Because even if you didn't know why Destiny, you know Uh, who Toru is. I I guess. Oh, right. Kabi has Talay? They have Talay, yeah. Interesting. They, did, they put out that His whole video recently. Not, hmm. They put out that whole video recently where he was like the CEO of Kabi A. Right, yes. So that's the other thing, too, is that like, so going back to Cal, for example, he is managed under SMDT. However, he just signed a contract with Channel 3. So... I believe there's some kind of connection between SMDT Thailand and Channel 3, but I'm not sure. But a couple of these boys will get contracts with studios. Like, Golf just got a contract with Channel 3. Uh, where And this is partially what's happening with Max and Tool. Here's a good example. And, like, Max... Um who is managed by Just Up, has a contract with TV Thunder to produce a certain number of shows for them. It's kind of the way that, like, actors in the West will sign contracts with Netflix Mm. and then be in Netflix Originals. It's sort of the same deal. Right, right. Uh, Another studio that we've we've personally heard quite a bit about lately is Inflow with Coffee Melody and Second Chance Series. Second Chance Series. Uh... And so Mflow, you know, like run from. Yeah. I would say like run and Mawin are probably like I would say the two. And, and then of course, like, so here's the thing about Mflow is they are more of like a production house. And so like, for example, right. Benz and Pavel are not signed exclusively to Mflow, though they are the leads in Coffee Melody. Yeah. I think that's the other thing is that like some of these production houses, if they don't have like a big pool of boys will do open casting. Yeah. You know, kind of how Tarn type didn't have a production house. They had like a production team, but then kind of had an open casting because, you know, they needed 
boys to pull from. And now you kind of you are seeing boys that are sort of like more closely associated with Me Mind Y, right. though they are not under Me Mind Y. So if you think about like mm-hmm. Jaw First, who are independent artists, yeah. They are associated with Me Mind Why. And so is, for example, like actually a really, really great example of this is Smart. So mm-hmm. Smart is associated with Me Mind Why because of Don't Say No. Right. He is managed by Yoma, mm-hmm. which is this company that is putting out the theory series. Theory series. Yeah. Right. So like it's it's really, really interesting with these independent actors. And this is why like it's good, I would say as a fan, at least for me, to know like what all who just at least the names of all of these studios so that I can follow them because you will find out more information and you'll just feel like you're more in the loop if you're following them. So like, for example, Mflow, if you're not following Mflow, you really have no insight into what's happening with coffee melody yeah. besides the random crap that pavel posts you know what yeah. i mean especially because not all these series have their own instagram accounts right so like you're not there's not a coffee melody instagram account it's it's all coming out of inflow and they've t- posted a ton of behind the scenes content which is awesome and so w- i think a good tee up for this is like beyond cloud and this kin porsche debacle right <laughs> yeah. is that like that was one of the biggest reasons to be following production companies rather than like yeah. just show accounts because when Ken Porsche switched over to be on cloud, which I think is going to be the final in this iteration, although like they've been filming. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Knock on wood. We'll see. I don't know. Rather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Be on cloud obviously is brand brand new and what has happened and is interesting is that some of these boys have become at least for the time being be on cloud artists yeah. and it hasn't happened with all of the boys and so this brings us into another smaller studio slash artist management company which is warper <laughs> um warper. y'all warper we love jeff satter let's just be honest <laughs> So Warper is one that we have known about for a very long time. Yeah. They have like three boys. They know and, how to do social media. And like really the way. one that you want to know is Jeff. Yeah. And so Jeff is obviously a part of Kin Porsche, but he is not a Beyond Cloud artist, though he does have Beyond Cloud listed as a work contact. Yeah. And if you – anything to do with Kin Porsche and Jeffrey – yeah. You have to go through Beyond Cloud, not through <laughs> Warper. Yeah, yeah. It's a very important distinction to know. I'm just yeah. telling you. Um, I'm not salty, I promise. Because that's the other thing, too, that's interesting is that, you know, when we start contacting for interviews, is that was the first thing I noticed when I got into BLs is like the work contact in their Instagram, which is fascinating. So that's kind of how you learn who these boys are connected to and just like the the wild web of like I well, and if you think about just like okay, so and this is again where we depart from the K-pop comparison because yeah. like <laughs> they're not locked. So an an SM, okay, here's a great example. We all as K-pop fans know and you hear the phrase like locked in the dungeon a lot. Mm. Um, and like, you know, yeah. like staff will closely monitor what they're allowed to do and say and be online. This is why like BTS, who just got their own personal Instagram accounts, it was like a big deal, right? And like yeah. when the Pentagon boys started getting their own personal Instagram accounts, it was like a yeah. big deal. And so like, and yeah, you yeah. hear, especially from SM artists where like, um, who was it was Taman was doing an interview where like Mark said something or other about like not b- like being allowed to have a cell phone and Taman was like or I guess they were allowed to have cell phones but they weren't allowed to have their like personal accounts yeah. and Taman was like oh that's rich like kids these days have so many freedoms kind of thing yeah. <laughs> and so like people who are idols that are signed to K-pop companies are very very closely like monitored and controlled right. this is not the case with these BL boys no. because so for example we talked about like Poppy is a part of Domundi and right. has been from the beginning but Poppy you do not book through Domundi 
Poppy, you book through Poppy. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. His, his things is like DM for work. Yeah. So like once you get into this, yeah, the it's truly like the Wild West of you just like. The Wild West. <laughs> I mean, I like. It's true. So, you know, as we close up and kind of wrap up this whole, you know, studios in Thailand, I think that has been like the interesting part is to learn about the different studios, learn about the productions that are coming out of them, because especially for 2022, we're getting a lot of shows and it's also good to know like where they're going to be. And of course, like the game is changing because line TV is going away and Gaga Ulala is like now become a big player in getting shows and streaming stuff. But like, GMM TV, you know they're always going to be on YouTube for the most part. And a handful of them were always online TV. And then a handful and of them... And here's the thing. Most of these shows are on regular TV on Thai TV. Right? Yeah, like you can all... use your like yeah. remote and turn on the TV. Right. Unless they call them a web series, most all of them are on... Yeah. TV they're just like a, an abbreviated version and then they put like a longer version an unedited version on streaming uh and then like for example uh the year yearbook the series was online TV exclusively but it become it became so popular that it got picked up by a channel so then they like moved it to actual TV which is awesome but yeah, so it's good to it's kind of good to have like an idea of who these studios are and what the productions are that they're coming out with just because like I don't know, it gives you a context to some of it. And uh, again, like we find this stuff fascinating cuz I think it's so fascinating. And wild. also, here's the thing, like it I think that it's good to know so that you can be watching and accessing these shows legally, like not to yeah. be those people in soapbox at you, right. but the thing about accessing them these shows legally, like everywhere, like access your titles legally, mm -hmm. but particularly Thailand. And I think that this is why it's like, it's so interesting. The ramp up that has happened here yeah. is that we know, and we've talked about it a few times, like BL is no longer a niche. Like mm -hmm. the pandemic happened and people internationally, people discovered BL and it became like a thing. Yeah. And so there has been this huge ramp up. BL is actually not that old. And right. so there is that in that it's a new industry, but especially in Thailand, like Thailand is the driver of this industry. And Thailand, I think people forget, is a developing nation. Mm. And so it's particularly important to understand all of these different studios and all of these different players, not only so that you can access your titles legally, quite frankly, so that these people get paid, yeah. but also so that like – if you're buying merch, if you're buying photo books, if you're like, if you are like financially supporting in any way, and that comes in the form of like watching shows, right? Every ad that pops up on your screen, that's financially supporting these people. Yeah. Um, I know that's, you mentioned this recently and I had not even considered that the reason that like GMM TV puts out their, their episodes in four parts is so that they can get ads from YouTube. They can maximize the ad yeah. revenue. Yeah. Which is wild. Like it's something that I wouldn't even think about or consider but that makes so much sense yeah and so like if you ever find yourself frustrated remember like that is how this new industry in a yeah. developing nation is getting paid so like it's i think it's important to understand all of the different players just so that you can like responsibly interact yeah. with this industry right and also because like i mean mad respect Right? Like, we saw, if if you look all the way back and you look, you watch, like, old documentary footage of, like, the explosion of the K-pop industry in South yeah. Korea and how it has become a major part of that country's GDP. Yeah. Because the same thing, right? Like, like I think people forget that South Korea was an active war zone in the 50s. Yeah, that is yeah. not that long ago, right? Yeah. This was like, this is not like how like in the United States, like when we go to war, like the war is not on our shores. Like the war right. is not like in our country. Yeah. South Korea was an active war zone. Like we're going through famine. Like people didn't have houses. People didn't have shoes, yeah, yeah. things like that in the fifties. Right. And so like their country was their like economy, GDP, everything was started from the ground up. And so like it, we're watching that kind of happen, not as dramatic, 
Right, right. But like Thailand is still a developing nation. I think people, it's really easy to forget that coming in as an international fan when you're used to consuming something like K-pop. Right, right. That like it is super important to financially mm-hmm. interact with all of this stuff the right way because right. I, I mean if you look at the GDP, it's just like it it, it would be irresponsible to try and like beat the system on this one right it's not like you're like using your friend's netflix password it's like it is it's not like borrowing somebody's amazon prime and like cheating jeff bezos out of his five dollars like it is not the same thing at all yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna consume international entertainment like it's important for you to do it in the right way uh and so we've talked a lot about thailand because that's where a majority of like these studios kind of play a role but you do have this in other places you you know Taiwan they've talked a little bit like Gaga is producing and putting out their own stuff and you also have um the history series has like a studio yeah, house result that, entertainment that they that they put and yeah like you had result for we best love you have some of the same studios producing BLs for Korea, you kind of hear the, the overlap of like when they put when they talk about like a new series coming out was produced by this series. Uh, and f- a few of the BL boys are coming from like the same management studios. You're seeing it happen really, really quickly in the Philippines. Um, obviously, yeah. Idea First Company would be like the first one that comes to mind for most mm-hmm. people. Um, but you're seeing kind of this explosion. So you have like in the Philippines, like Oxen Films, which doesn't is like an international and doesn't just do BL, but like they're they're the ones that have Rainbow Prints coming out that everybody's yeah. talking about. And then you have like Ride or Die, which has corn things. Right. Um, so yeah, you're seeing it in the Philippines too, just like at a much like quicker scale because this kind of became a thing within like the past year. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you guys have enjoyed (laughs) this studio rundown. Uh, I enjoyed researching it because again, when I got into BLs, like this was kind of one of the first big topics that I learned about and found really interesting because there's not a ton of information compiled online. So we kind of wanted to give like a somewhat quick overview of like who these studios are and what they look like. And you Oh, and my have- last disclaimer is we purposely didn't mention Muse Studio because Muse Studio does not put out BLs. Yeah. So Muse a BL boy who has his own studio that doesn't do BLs. Yeah. It's not a per well, I will say like he has- I can already feel the comments coming being like, Why yeah. are you talking about Muse Studio? Because Muse he- Studio relates to Muse as a musician and to this like new like Acting. saving the oceans situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the other thing. Like we we don't know much about the content that he's gonna be putting yeah. out. So So we purposely yeah. didn't include it in this because it's not a yeah. BL player. Yep. That makes sense. Okay, guys, this has been Let's Talk BL. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and keep up with all things Let's Talk BL at Let's Talk BL.